Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. Throw away because my entire family uses Reddit. My parents, siblings, and I have been super close like a tight-knit family. I feel extremely privileged to say that I have come from a wealthy background, and my parents have and had always raised me with a lot of love, adoration, and opportunities. Not to confuse it with being spoiled rotten, but I have always had a slight edge over most of the people in my high school and even in college, and it always showed. So it wasn't surprising when in college, when I met my girlfriend, female 22, Jenna, and she was extremely curious about the lifestyle that I lived. It just didn't help the fact that Jenna and I both belonged to completely different financial backgrounds. Her having an extremely rough childhood, both parents being alcoholics and broke, while me being blessed with the most amazing opportunities life has to offer. Yet we didn't really let our differences come in the way because at the end of the day, what mattered was that our interests, views on life, core values aligned and they did. So I never really had a problem getting along with Jenna and also helped whenever possible in subtle ways because I really thought she was the kind who always held her head up high and never wanted to show that she was in need. Well, we spent our college years this way and never in a million years I suspected anything wrong or malicious between us. It was like all I felt was our love growing and with the immense love and support showered upon us by not just our friends, but my family too, just made me feel so assured that I had found my one and only. Well, unfortunately, that was far from the case because if that was it, I wouldn't be here pouring my heart out and with tears in my eyes. It all starts from the moment we graduate from our four years course. I still vividly remember our graduation day because I was so proud of us that day. It was like I had seen our relationship bloom into the beauty it is. Not just that, though. I had also seen Jenna be such a trooper and graduate college debt-free. I was on top of the moon. A couple of months had passed since graduation and we were still living with our roommates because our job situation wasn't still fixed. Jenna wasn't sure what she wanted to do, and neither was I until I got a great internship offer from one of the best companies in my field of work. That too, a paid one. It was absolutely unreal, but there was one problem that arose from it. The fact that I will have to move to an entirely different state for the next six months while Jenna wanted to stay back and pursue her master's from a college in the same state as my parents. Now, Money wasn't an issue for the both of us at that point, but renting out two different apartments would be such a waste of money. So after a lot of discussions, Jenna suggested that we ask my parents if they'd let her live with them if she paid for minor stuff like groceries and such. Big mistake, but of course, being the fool I was, I said yes, and my parents, being the kind souls they were, happily agreed, refusing to take even a single cent from her. Well, that is what our living situation looked like for the next three months. I would visit during the weekends between every two weeks because that was just more feasible to me because then I could meet both my parents and Jenna at the same time. Even with that though, I offered her to come stay with me for some time if she wanted to, but that offer was declined every time and honestly, I didn't see a problem with that because after all, like I said, it was just more sensible for me to visit rather than her. So that continued, and I was really happy to see with every visit, the bond between my girlfriend and my parents just strengthened. It was like she had become one of their children, and Jenna too loved it so much, as it made her feel like she was receiving at least some of the childhood she had lost. It all stayed the same until I was in the fourth month of my internship and Jenna wanted to come with me to the city I was doing my internship in. And right after that, I started observing small changes, not just within Jenna, but my parents too. Now, it made sense why Jenna would act this way. She had her finals coming up, but my parents, on the other hand, I was too confused because their coldness towards me wasn't like them at all, and the fact that it was just towards me struck me even more. So 
I tried to probe around and see if I could get a response, but nope, nothing. It was just plain silence. It was like they began stonewalling me while showing all the love to my girlfriend and siblings. Being homesick already, this started to impact my mental health terribly. And even after trying to reach out to Jenna about it, nothing really happened. But homesick already. This started to impact my mental health terribly. And even after trying to talk to Jenna about it, nothing really changed. So it was my last month into this internship and I had returned home for Christmas. Things were the same. My family was excluding me from pretty much everything. They were cold, distant, and even started being rude to me during some interactions and Jenna was being babied as usual. I had reached my breaking point and just knew I had to find out the reason behind all this. So I let everyone enjoy their dinner and Christmas night, karaoke, then When everyone had left for bed, I swiftly took my dad's phone that he had left in the living room to see if there's anything going on, and boy, it was like I had opened the Pandora's box. My dad's phone not only consisted of an abnormal amount of messages from Jenna, but my entire family had a group chat without me, with Jenna included. I just knew something very wrong was going on and very hesitantly decided to open the group chat. I was horrified to see messages upon messages by Jenna talking about me and my affair. Apparently, according to her, I started a whole affair while I was on my internship with an intern and the only reason why I wasn't inviting my parents over was to hide the affair. I had started shaking after reading it and felt like I was in some sort of nightmare because it wasn't the lies that Jenna spread. It was the blatant and blind support by my parents and siblings to her. All of them bad-mouthing me as if I was some sort of freak and giving Jenna all the attention of the world. Hell, even going as far as to give her money on multiple occasions. It was a long, long read. And by the end of it, I felt like I had lost my mind. The nail on the coffin was the part where my parents discussed sitting me down tomorrow itself and telling me that they were done with me. They were going to disown me, and everyone in the group chat was encouraging it. I was heartbroken. Even though I had done nothing wrong, it felt like my life had turned upside down. I knew I just had to get out, but before that, I wanted to do one thing. And that was go through Jenna's phone because there was no way in this world that she would be smart enough to make such an elaborate plan. And boy, was I right. It was none other than her parents who she was having a back and forth with about this. Also, that they could get money out of us. I immediately screenshotted as many emails as I possibly could before just packing up my important things and leaving. That is where I am currently, in a hotel room, trying to comprehend everything as my phone has been blowing up with texts from my parents asking me about my whereabouts in the most passive-aggressive way possible. What should I do here? AITA? My phone has still been blowing up and I honestly still can't get myself to face the situation. I am quite literally done, not just with Jenna, but with my family as well, who found it so convenient and easy to believe her over me and treat me as horribly as they did over the past few months. But I also know for a fact that they deserve to know how terribly they have messed up by believing Jenna. So I decided to just face it and called up my dad who was pissed at me for ruining Christmas. I simply just laughed at his face and told him it isn't me who's ruining Christmas for their new daughter who has ruined it all for us. He seemed confused and was almost about to get mad at me all over again, but I didn't give him the chance to. I simply just told them that I'll be coming over to meet them tonight before hanging up. I met up with my family and it was a shit show to say the least. The moment I entered the house... It was like they all had ganged up on me and were just waiting for me to walk in the house to leash all their frustrations on me. But I wasn't going to let them have it at all. I simply just placed the folder I had created on the table and everyone looked pretty dumbfounded and confused as to what it was. 
They opened it to find out the screenshots of the conversations between Jenna and her parents. I highlighted the specific parts where she shit-talked about my parents and how hungry she was for their money. I simply just left after that as their expression switched from confusion to shock to anger as Jenna looked like she had just seen a ghost. Everyone immediately began trying to get me to wait back, but I wasn't going to. I just got up and left. My phone then started blowing up with texts, everyone explaining their side of the story. I sat in my hotel room reading all of them with a glass of whiskey in my hand, laughing at their foolishness as the story that Jenna had created was so poorly formed that even a 10-year-old could debunk it. Now, I don't know when and if I'm ever going to talk to them. For now, I need my space and time away from them all. I'm also thinking about taking up the job offer the company that I was interning at gave me. Hi everyone, it's been a while since I last updated this post. I ended up taking the job offer and am currently residing in the same city as I was working in. Life is good, especially without Jenna. I did end up meeting my family for one last time during New Year's when I told them how disappointed I was in them and how hurt I was in their treatment towards me. They had kicked out Jenna the same day itself because they wanted their son back. I simply replied that wasn't going to be possible and if they wanted me to forgive them, they needed to give me space. And with time, maybe I'll be able to forgive them. That's where I am currently. As far as I've heard, Jenna is struggling with her life because she had dropped out of her degree because of all the money my parents had given her. For me, life is good and Jenna has just become a monkey in the circus that doesn't belong to me. NTA, your family must be naive as hell to simply just believe what Jenna said. Better to stay low contact with them. I'm sorry that you had to go through all this, OP. NTA, the moment Jenna suggested to live with your parents was the moment I knew she was behind the money. Good on you for taking a stand for yourself and kicking her to the curb. I'm a 28-year-old female and for more than half my life, my mom gave up being a parent to me, my brother and sisters. She didn't teach us how to drive, didn't go to any extracurricular activities or taught us girls about puberty and what to expect with our bodies. We literally had to learn these things from school or friends. She was always mean and angry. We couldn't ask to go anywhere and didn't have a good upbringing. I am one of six kids. My twin and I are basically the only two that have done something with our lives. I currently work at an airline company and had to move up north. My mom was already living here, so it was a no-brainer to move in with her. She lied about her living situation and I was forced to look for other accommodations. But now she's approved through Section 8 for a two-bedroom apartment. The condition is she has to have a live-in aid to get the two-bedroom, so I accepted to live with her. Otherwise, they would only put her in a one-bedroom apartment. Now, onto the situation. The airline I work for has strict rules when it comes to flight benefits. You are responsible for anybody who I put on my flight list. The least that can happen is I lose this privilege, and the worst that can happen is I get fired. Now, I know my mom. She is a narcissist, A.H. She is manipulative to get what she wants. She gets an attitude when she doesn't get her way. Right now, she's trying to manipulate me to bringing up what she did for us as kids, which she was obligated to do since we were kids. We didn't birth ourselves. Now she's trying to throw in my face that she's letting me stay with her. It's all about her. She doesn't even care that I can lose my job if she goes off at the airport. She thinks I'm just being mean. Truthfully, I want to add her, but the slightest possibility of something going with the flight pisses her off and I'm responsible for scares me. I'll rather not add and won't. This is my livelihood. I just started this week and haven't used my own benefits. This isn't about her, but she thinks it is. I'll be moving out soon because she has always been like this. You can't ask for nothing without returning the favor, but this is a big request. AITA for not wanting to add her to my flight benefits? NTA, just tell her that you can't add her to your benefits. Lie if you have to. 
Tell her you can't add anyone new until the next cycle or that you can't add her because people used your body passes and didn't pay the fee. Make it high, like $5,000. And until it is paid, you can't add anyone else. Whatever you have to do, but do not add her if she will not be able to behave and follow the rules. NTA, tell her, since you are new, you cannot add other people into your flight benefits yet. Then move ASAP. The stress of living with her is not worth the amount you're saving living with her. Also, she needs you to keep the two-door apartment. Without you, they will move her to a one-bedroom unit, so she owes you. Learn to mess with her too. I, 21 male, have a lot of medical issues, all caused by a genetic mutation I developed from my father. He's been sick all my life, almost died a good dozen times as I have. My little sister has just been diagnosed with the disease too. It's degenerative, and in six short years, I've gone from being at the gym four times a week and playing football at a rep level to being a wheelchair user in diapers and a feeding tube. I obviously can't work and am reliant on government payments and my partner. But because of how rare and complicated my case is, I have to see a lot of doctors and take a lot of treatments. I'm talking 2000 Australian dollars a month. I'm super lucky to have a pensioner card and NDIS to support these costs, but I've had to miss out on some pretty important treatments simply because we can't afford it. I've never really blamed my parents for my health. It's not their fault. And I've made do with the life they gave me, and I honestly love life, though, of course, I have my moments. You know, when something super shitty happens, but no one's to blame, so you kind of just burst a bit. Yeah. Well, that's what happened a couple of weeks ago. My parents' involvement in my medical care has always been a point on contention. My dad has never actually been formally diagnosed as he distrusts doctors. If he'd pursued treatment beyond the times he almost died, I would have most likely received earlier intervention than I did, which could have saved me a lot of trauma and slowed the progression of the disease. I was visiting my parents for Father's Day. We were having lunch when my mom brought up my cousin's wedding in January. She asked my partner and I how we were planning on getting there. I mentioned that my partner was considering not going in order to save money. Keep in mind, he doesn't know her. My mom blew up. She accused us of being selfish, saying we earn a lot and it was unfair to cancel when we could just save up. So I told her that all my pay goes to medical expenses and some of my partners has to too sometimes. We're actually currently living with my in-laws because we can't afford rent as well as my medical expenses. I explained the situation, but she was just so dismissive. She complained that it wasn't fair for them that my partner skip, regardless of our finances. Why don't you just pay for my medical bills then? It's not fair for me that I have to pay for something that was forced onto me. I immediately felt terrible for what I insinuated, and my mom stormed out. My partner says my feelings were completely valid and it's understandable I blew up like that. My little sisters say the same, but I'm not so sure. It isn't my mom's fault either, and while that's not all what I meant by what I said, it also kind of was on like a deeper level. I don't know how I feel. I've apologized to my mom, but she's still really upset, and I want to know other people's opinions, so was I the a-hole? NTA, with all due respect, it most certainly is your parents' fault you are if they knowingly passed on the condition and then refused intervention. As a result of their choice, you now have financial and physical suffering, yet despite that, seem like a lovely, happy person, and really, your mom should be more respectful to you. NTA, obviously it's not their fault you're sick but harassing you and trying to make you feel guilty when you have to choose not to do things based on finances because of your illness is their fault. There's also the issue of not having an earlier intervention, which I kind of wonder doesn't bother you more than you let on. Regardless, your partner is right. Your feelings are valid. You are living with something that you had no choice in and was forced on you. 
and it's unfair and shitty and your mom has no right to make it harder by giving you crap about not going to an event for whatever reason, whether it's finances or how you're feeling physically or just not wanting to go.